using the large sample of student height data again, we're going to calculate the confidence interval. When you're writing up your data and you're summarizing it, if you've got a measurement variable, a scalar variable, you could summarize it using the mean and the standard error, which I've shown previously. But even better than that is to summarize it as a confidence interval. This allows you to see clearly when a scientist understands the depth of statistics and when they're presenting their results. Those that give you the confidence interval clearly understand the statistics and the process. Those who give you mean and standard error, they understand it fairly well. And this is a good way to report your data, data but not the best. If they're reporting means and standard deviations, this is not a very good way of reporting data. Let's calculate the confidence interval. Go to descriptive statistics. We're going to pick height. Now you can actually uh, choose different levels of confidence. By default, people usually pick 95% confidence interval, but you can pick it to be 99% if you want to. So you do that from the statistics function there. We'll leave it at 95% and press OK. So this gives you the output table. So the 95% confidence interval is between two values. The lower bound is the bottom side below the mean, and the upper bound is the top range above the mean. So in this case, it goes from 1.657 meters to 1.76 meters. So it's a very narrow confidence interval. And that should be what you report in your table of data.